And with that, uh, Project Lead the Way and the Robotics, uh, our instructor, Tammy Sperk, is here to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that she's been working on with the students. I'm Tammy Spork. Okay, so I started here late in September. I have a variety of different skills. I come from manufacturing of 16 years, started teaching in 05. So I have a little bit of a different background. Um, the first thing I like to work on once I come into a school district is to see the math skills in the students and, and how I can bring that up right away. Not only that, but organizing and learning how to document notes. This is so important once they come into the industry, that's what we're looking for. Can they follow directions? Can they actually listen, think, and solve? That's a Rockwell quote, so I'm gonna give them that credit. Um, so, uh, let's see here, what were we doing? We were meeting with the math department. I had met with Dawn as well and mentioned to her as far as conversions and things like that, if we could start making a little bit more progress for all of our manufacturing tech ed department students if we can have the math department working with math skills for the te technology department, that would really help. And I believe she's working with Ryan on that as we speak. Another tool that I've brought in, um, we've purchased the school district, IXL Math. So th this allows students to go back to second, third, or fourth grade level if they need to, to bring their skills up. And it actually gives them the test, it corrects them for them automatically and explains to them what the problem was and they can continue going through. Um, it helps the students actually gain confidence that nobody is really correcting their papers other than themselves and it allows the teacher to actually follow track to see where they've gone and what they excelled at. So IXL math was very helpful. Um, I've had two career speakers come in. One of them of course was Barry Butters from Precision Plus. Uh, he presented the entire day for all the classes. The students learned quite a bit about manufacturing and engineering. And then we had Amber Culver come through from the Department of Workforce and Development. Um, she gave them a lot of resources, not only that, but she connected the career cruising that we now have at the school district. Um, all of my students have registered. They have taken the assessment skills and they were directed to, by me, to find three careers where their natural talents and abilities and their interests were going to. And then we focused on that to find out how we can help them and they entered it into their portfolios to refer back to um, in Project Lead the Way, uh, there is a unit that we focus on just careers in themselves. There's one more thing that I like to touch note on and that's a test that the kids will take and that's called VARC, Visual Oral Reading on Kinesthetic Learners. I feel it's important that each and every one of our learners understand how they learn. Do you learn visually? Are you kinesthetic? Are you an orally or are you a reader? I like to separate these students so they can collaborate with one another. It really excels their learning curve when they find out that, oh, you're more of a visual. Hey, how can you do this with sketching? It's called VARC and the students appreciated it. It was new to them, I found out, and, and they really liked that. Uh, career cruising as well was very good for them. Um, digital engineering portfolios. I put a hyperlink out there for you. Um, I was a state presenter for Project Lead the Way in 05 and 06 as well. And it's amazing at how far it has changed just within the years that I've been teaching Project Lead the Way. What I really like about it is that the industry and the communities, we collaborate to keep our students up. Our nation really needs our, our students that are coming out of, let's start down at the middle school, if not grade school. I finished a two-year research project two years ago. Students between the ages of 11 and 14 are the first multitasking generation. 
which ladies and gentlemen today are our freshmen. So if I would like to actually go around and talk to every freshman teacher to see how the students have changed within the last year or two due to technology. So with technology, um, if we go ahead and just click on that hyperlink, I just want to show you this is what the electronic portfolios are. Project Lead the Way students are communicating with the industry and all the universities and technical colleges. What you see is a manual one there. They are now submitting them port uh, electronically. Um, like I said, I had just started talking via email with Beth Clark. I'd like to sit down face to face with her and get our, board, our Beloit students creating electronic portfolios. Um, right now we have in my classroom, there's probably about a dozen and a half that are solid A portfolios that I do know my past students have just taken it in for interviews and they were hired on a spot. They're receiving credits, three credit courses, just by bringing in their portfolios and engineering notebooks. So if we can actually accelerate their learning curve by e portfolio and your iPads is what I'm trying to integrate here. So it's a learning curve, right? Um, innovation portal as well. I had forgotten about that. Project Lead the Way is now connected worldwide, globally. It's called Innovation Portal. So when it's our kids start coming up with their design projects, new ideas, um, we're working globally. We can now start connecting with other communities to come up with new ideas. Innovative, right? National accreditation. Um, I've gone through this twice with two other schools, um, and I would like to bring it into Beloit as well. However, we need one more Project Lead the Way. You have to have four Project Lead the Way courses in a district, along with corporate partnership, which we're working on now, in order for the students to, create, to take that final exam, which comes out of New York, which is online, and um, they'll receive three college credits for each Project Lead the Way course that they take. So it's one more class. Um, if I was to give any suggestion, it would be the computer integrated manufacturing. I'm already certified for that, so that would actually save the school district $3,000 on that. But it integrates your digital electronics and your CNC machining and your welding department. And it focuses on getting the students to where we want them to. National sponsorship. Um, I don't think I have to talk too much about that. How many of you are aware of Project Lead the Way and how, oh, one, one person, two person? Okay, well you know how many corporations are actually backing us up. Um, Karen Wilkins is who I've dealt with through the uh, Kern Foundation, um, great woman. She's uh, helped a lot of communities as far as working with the foundation in four states. That's Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Illinois. Um, the Mr. and Mrs. Kern, of course, I've met them several times. and. Great people. Um, First Robotics is where I'm going to next. Uh, that $500 check. Um, coming into your school district here, I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm intimidating some people. So I'm taking a step back. Instead of coming right out and developing an FRC team, which I've been involved in developing two of these, uh, one in Milwaukee, and then now I mentor a team that's in Waukesha. And, um, I think we're going to take our high school students and I'm going to be training them to actually work with the FLL. That's the lower level of the first robotics teams. Um, this will develop their confidence, the students' confidence, to help them work within the community. Um, $500 is enough to purchase one Mindstorm. Uh, my goal here is to get four middle schools so we can sustain a high school team. There's no sense in starting. I've seen that. I've been there. We've started a team, and uh, you start out very slow because kids don't have enough confidence. Can we get the sponsorships? I think we will. We will have our students go and present to the corporations rather than the adults present. Uh, they sell more than any one of us, or myself for that matter. I've seen it, and it's just amazing. Uh, I think that's the only reason why I'm still in here is to watch those kids go in there and just see them grow and develop into confident leaders. So I'm very happy that Barry and Mike came in tonight and donated that. I also submitted a, um, a grant to the Mimic Foundation, which I should find out February 15th for $500. And today, there was an email that just went out with three or four other grants that I possibly will be writing. 
or if other corporations that are out there want to come on board and help us out, that would be nice. One team per middle school. Before you know it, you're going to end up with three and four teams per middle school. It runs like wildfire. Your high school students will feel very good about themselves, and that's what we want. Confident leaders. But we'll take it slow. So my plan is to put up two fields in the lab that's right next door to my lab right now, and then uh, after school. Um, we have about 10 students that would like to come on board already. They've just been waiting. Um, Hananiga Robotics Collaboration, I believe they came to the school board two years ago and there was a two-year contract. I did go down there and meet with them and uh, this will be their second year. Um, we would like to keep NASA on board if we do go as far as developing an FRC team here in the city of Beloit. And the reason why I would only like four of our students from the high school to go down there is so that when we do develop our team here, we can be considered a rookie team at that, part, at that point, and NASA will give us the $4,000 as being a rookie team. I would hate to lose out of that cash because of our students were working with them as well. So that's another reason why we're taking this slow. Um, and then Team 2062 Robotic Build, uh, during your cold ice days, that's where I've been. And I just took some photos last night. I told the kids I was a little perturbed because our CAD department, you know, we separate all the students into little. You can't get on there. Come on. Really? No, you can't. Bryce is logged in. All righty. Well, they're operating CNC machines. We're in the middle of building our chassis right now, and we're working on our our two-gear uh, drive system instead of a mechanic wheel. And I have students actually taking the CAD files, using the blueprints and manufacturing and developing the code on there, um, the G-code. And um, wanted to show you how we could integrate our first robotics right into our project Lead the Way. And um, it has kids developing their own little community. There were some pretty nice shots in there. Um, corporate membership, of course, the hardest thing with any kind of a program like this is mentors. Is there a stipend? That's what you hear from a lot of people. And as soon as you say, uh, no, there is no stipend, uh, they don't stick around for too long. I can't tell you how many teams I have seen that um, started after school programs two, three years down the road, they disintegrate because we've lost our adult coach. So with the LEGO Robotics, what you'll have is the high school students becoming a mentor. We will have one adult coach hoping for it to be at least be around two, three, four years would be nice. By the time these students get into the high school, you'll see. Um, at the present team that I'm in right now, we have 14 adults that show up during the build season. Right now, we're going seven days a week due to the cold weather where a lot of our parts have been backlogged. So we're machining a lot of our parts, trying to get that six-week build done. Um, so this is where we're looking for the corporations, too, is to get those engineers to come on board with us and help the students learn the manufacturing and engineering right from professionals. Um, engineering challenges also help with that. I don't think we have enough time. I think I'm talking too much, so I'll let Ryan go on. Thank you. Um, also, uh, a big challenge uh, is also managing and trying to think of uh, different ways that we can begin incorporating these experiences within the middle school curriculum as well. Um, so I, I wanted to be able to have students be introduced so, to some of the course offerings that we have. For instance, we have a, our construction courses um, that had not really been touched on at the middle school level. So I thought, uh, well, in the sixth grade, we can at least introduce the vocabulary. They'd be able to um, draw a wall, and they'd actually be able to create or make the wall in a small-scale version. So that was one of the different things that I've asked the middle school teachers to do. Um, we also did a mass production project, and that kind of um, allows students to um, use the different equipment, learn about jigs and fixtures, different radiuses, um, finding centers, and, and I actually have uh, an example of what they did for their mass production project, and that was done with uh, Mr. Light at 
um, Aldrich Middle School. So it's just something a little bit different than a birdhouse and different than a toolbox. So um, I want to make sure that we're not uh, continuing with um, you know, some of those things that don't necessarily have a uh, provide a challenge for students. Now, what we did is uh, for the mass production project, the students had two separate shifts. So there were two class periods. They had a first shift and a second shift. And um, the students would produce the parts within the first hour, and they'd document it. And then uh, the next hour would take up where they left off. Um, and we did that same thing uh, throughout uh, the manufacturing or assembly portion as well. Um, students are working on, in the for the design and modding class, uh, uh, again, Barry discussed the Autodesk Inventor. So they are using the 3D solid modeling. Um, for their design and modeling, modeling class. They're also doing uh, a little bit of the VEX robotics uh, programming in their automation and robotics class. And then they also take a print um, of a bridge or different types of bridges and they uh, create those using connects. Um, so that's what's been going on at uh, Aldrich. Now the goal is to obviously have both buildings doing similar things. Um, one kind of difficulty is you have different instructors with diff different certifications, and um, so that's that can be a challenge. So um, my goal as the career and tech director is to make sure that that's happening, um, especially with the two new buildings. I want uh, district-wide to have the same curriculum, the same experiences, um, and I think that's important. Uh, at McNeil, uh, the design and modeling, uh, students are using 3D sol uh, solid modeling software as well. Um, and actually, our instructor, uh, Mr. Crystal Master, is able to get a 3D printer. Uh, it's called a MakerBot Replica 2. Um, and he was able to get that donated through donorchoose.org. Uh, now what students are able to do is they're actually to take their um, creations or their designs and print them out. And I actually have a couple here. Um, and I can pass these around, but this is made out of our 3D printer. Um, and I can, they also created a chain. Um, the first, the, the block or the, um, that it's actually an assignment and the students have to take and they have to draw um, that assignment and it's on my next slide actually, so I can show you. Um, they also created mantle clocks, and they designed and assembled them in the uh, traditional tech ed. Um, and as well, just like they are at Aldrich, they're beginning to program their VEX robotic kits um, in automation and robotics. And they're also doing the different bridge um, designs using connects. Oh, can you go back? One more. Actually, it's Ford. Sorry. Now, right there, um, the part, the, the bigger block portion, um, you can actually see the print, and the students will take the print, and they'll um, use Autodesk Inventor, and they will um, draw it in Inventor, and then they're able to take it and print it. Um, on the bottom picture, uh, they were designing their own keychains, and so they were able to print out their different designs. So. Uh, Inspire Rock County, our career, uh, our career cruising initiative. If you're not familiar with that, that is um, the connection between uh, the business and and uh, allows us to connect with the education community, and um, it's going to be a wonderful tool uh, for students uh, to begin career planning as well as um, their academic planning. Our counselors have been trained by uh, Steve Yon from Career Cruising. Our career and technical education teachers have been asked to introduce, um, and Tammy has been able to do that with her students as well as some other instructors, and also the career teachers in, in sixth and eighth grade um, at both of the middle schools have been um, really using the software with their students. Now there are some assessment pieces in that that 
kind of uh, can pinpoint what a student's interests are, and then they can kind of go from there on, you know, if they decide to go to the maybe a technical college route or maybe what courses they should be in, or should take um, the high school level or even at the middle school level. Some of the upcoming events. Um, tonight was supposed to be our 8th grade expo. That's been rescheduled uh, for, uh, for February 3rd. And on February 19th, our career and, technical, uh, career and technical education open house will be from 4.30 to 6. Hopefully there's not a cold spell during that time as well. Um, and my goal with that is to really um, kind of promote career and technical education. Um, February is uh, career and tech month, so um, we thought it would be a good time um, to have people from the community come in and really see what our career and technical education program is about. Um, allow them to do different hands-on um, activities and we want to make sure that we're kind of promoting our open enrollment at each of those events and we'll also have career cruising demonstrations for parents um, we have some people that will have a booth set up for career cruising and this last clip is it's a video of um, some interesting facts and in how career and technical education is kind of um, running with that and um, trying to make a difference in, in, in education. <laughs> 